Good afternoon and welcome back to My Messy Home. Today I'm going to talk to you about how you can use a servo motor as both an input and an output device. Now, the servo motor itself actually consists of a motor portion and a potentiometer and some feedback control circuitry, but normally all you do is you send it an output and it moves to the position you want. However, if you crack the top off of it, you can actually hook a wire up to the center pin on the potentiometer and actually read the voltage back yourself. Now, if you're not driving the servo motor with the voltage, it doesn't actually move. So, if you twist it back and forth, you can actually measure that voltage and use it as you would any other sensor. So, why would you want to do this? Well, if you're already using servo motors in your project, you already have all those sensors there, so you might as well take advantage of them. So, for instance, if you've got a robot arm and it's not moving at the time and you want to know if it runs into something, well, if you're measuring that voltage, then you can tell. Another thing that I thought would be even funnier is to use this as a keyframe animation device. So the idea would be if you have a robot or some sort of toy that you want to program into a bunch of different positions, what you can do is you can write some software that um, allows you to move the robot into one position, press a button, move it into the next position, press a button, and it keeps remembering those states, and then you press another button and it plays it back. And you could actually record that to um, the flash RAM if you wanted to. So that's actually what I did, and I have a little example for you here, and I'll show you how it works. Okay, so here we go. So here's my example. It's a pretty, pretty simple little system. It's got the servo motor I'm talking about. I've added the extra wire that you can see here, and I've got an Arduino microcontroller that I've programmed to run this. So I've got two buttons back here, and first of all, I'm going to reset it because it's really not a very complicated program. And the first button, what it does is it records the position, like I was saying. And I'm only using one servo in this example, but in general you could use any number that you wanted to. It's just I happen to have one right now. So what I'll do is I'll move it into number of positions, and every time I move it into the position I want, I press the button to remember, and we'll have it stop at the top here. And then there's a the second button, which is the play button. So I press that, and now it's going to go back and play through all these steps. Now, the one that I have actually waits for one second in between each step, but in general, you can make it record the length of time, too, if you wanted. And that's all. Thank you.